Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you can see me uh, and you can hear me. So my name is uh, Przemysław Stankowski. I'm in charge of uh, <clears throat> surgical education in the Dawson Academy in Poland. Uh, it would be great if you can uh, type on the chat, if you can see and hear well. It would be great if you can type on the chat. Okay. I will wait for your answers. Just let me know if you can hear me. Okay, Katya, I see and hear. Okay, perfect. David, all good, perfect. <clears throat> So it will be great because I know that some of you are from other parts of uh, Europe than uh, <clears throat> Poland. If you can type, where are you from? Okay, there it is. Oh, Poland, Monika. Okay, so Warsaw, perfect. So uh, before we start, uh, it will be, oh, David is from Switzerland, great. Uh, <clears throat> that will set uh, up for the questions. Uh, you can type the questions in the chat box and uh, Eva will answer them after the presentation. You can type them in English or in Polish. So we will manage it to, to answer it. And now I would like to welcome Eva. Uh, she is a specialist in periodontist. Uh, she is a <clears throat> teacher and great uh, practitioner. She has a wonderful presentation. And I'm very glad that we have you Eva with us today. Good evening, dear colleagues. It's very nice to see all of you joining this webinar and uh, technologies nowadays takes a uh, very important place in our lives. Unfortunately, we cannot trust them 100%. So let's hope this time we will be more successful with the presentation. And in case you will have some sound or view problems, please write a comment. And as uh, Dr. Uh, Perry mentioned, you can write the questions that I will try to answer after the presentation. Okay, let me share my screen with you. Just one minute. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of you already knows me. And for those who are seeing for the first time, I'm Yevo Nunite, dentist, periodontist with more than 10 years of clinical experience in the field of periodontology. Recent five years, I'm working mainly in aesthetic periodontal plastic surgeries. And uh, today I would like to share with you some important steps that could be helpful in your daily practice and could lead you to the successful treatment results. When we are speaking about the successful treatment after the recession defect surgical treatment, mainly uh, we have to think about two parameters. If it corresponds to biological concept. That means after the treatment, if we have 100 recession defect coverage, also if we have healthy tissue after the treatment, uh, that means that no bleeding on probing and sulcus no more than two millimeters. And finally, if we gain some attached gingiva after the treatment for the long-term stability. When we are considering if our treatment is successful from the aesthetic 
standpoint of view. We are checking not only the balance between white and pink, but we would like to see the tissue color, shape and texture matching to the adjacent teeth. And also we don't want to see the discrepancy on the tooth crown. This presentation, I would like to separate into three, three main most important parts. And first part, I would like to start with the correct case selection. So when we are selecting the cases for the recession defect treatment, you have to put into your list where you should avoid surgical treatment by shortening the teeth with these cases that I would like to start. And you will be more successful if you don't treat them by shortening the teeth. So the first patient came for the second opinion. She was unhappy with her long central right incisor and she already had uh, some uh, consultation from the periodontist to shorten the teeth. He or she suggested to make a recession defect treatment. So when we check the patient's smile, we, we can see disalignment between the left and right sides, but intraorally, we also can evaluate and check the discrepancy of the gingival margin between the left and right central incisors. And when we look closer, we can see beautiful enamel and gingival margin on top of that. So in this case, our diagnosis, it's not a recession defect on central incisor. This is the tooth crown anomaly. And then I'm checking the adjacent teeth and I find out that we have discrepancy due to altered passive eruption. So what could be the treatment options in this case? Obviously, if you are an expert in periodontal surgery, and if you trust yourself 100%, you can choose and make the mucogingival surgery by shortening the tooth. But in that case, you have to make a huge reduction of cervical part of the tooth and then make a mucogingival surgery. In case you are successful with the treatment, you will have the shortened tooth. But what will happen if you have bad hand day or if you failed with a treatment? So in that case, you will have huge sensitivity. It can end up with the endodontic treatment. And finally, you can create true recession defect. So in such cases, my treatment plan was suggested for the patient make an intrusion on the right segment. And after it, you can make a sh short clinical crown lengthening. And if the patient is still not happy with the final result, to suggest the Botox injection, reduce lip mobility. The other case where the patient came for the recession defect treatment, and when we see the smile of the patient, we can clearly see this alignment between the gingival margin position. Again, intraorally, I can see beautiful enamel and gingival margin on top of that. So there is no true recession defect. And then we are investigated against adjacent teeth. And in that case, we had also altered passive eruption case. So the treatment will be not a recession defect treatment, but the crown lengthening. One more group of the patients that uh, frequently refer to the surgeon to treat by mucogingival surgeries is the patient with a non-carious or carrier cervical lesions. When the doctor sees the lesion in the cervical part of the tooth, they, um, most or all of them, they are thinking that this treatment is supposed to be with the uh, mucogingival surgeries. But this treatment should be more conservative. It means you have to make a composite restoration and that's it. 
even if you have small recession defect, the treatment is only conservative by composite filling. One more group, when the patient comes for the recession defect treatment referred by general practitioners, the patients that have small recession defects. And in such situation, when you have very good thickness and height of keratinized tissue and small recession defects, you don't need to perform mucogingival surgery. In that cases, you have to check the habit of the uh, cleaning of the patient and might be you can send the patient to check if the occlusion is correct. Another case, when we have hopeless teeth after the two or three mucogingival surgeries. In such situation, don't promise for the patient to make uh, root coverage by one more mucogingival surgery. The patient has two or three mucogingival surgeries and end up with a non-vital tooth and complete loss of keratinized tissue. If the patient asks for the aesthetic treatment, you have to tell the truth. The tooth has to be extracted and restored by bone or soft tissue augmentation. And on top of that, the crown on the implant or a bridge. So we know to, uh, which cases we should avoid to be more successful with our treatment. But what are the indications and what are the cases where we are treating with mucogingival surgery. Mainly we have medical indications and aesthetic indications that lead to mucogingival surgery. With the medical indications, we know that if we have small amount of keratinized tissue and already existing recession defect, when we have less than one millimeter of thickness of the tissue, thin gingival phenotype after orthodontic treatment, also high frenulum attachment, deep gingival recession defects after orthodontic treatment, and gingival tissue defects, those cases are the cases that we should treat by mucogingival surgery. A little bit more about gingival tissue defects. When the defect due to the trauma, trauma is only in epithelium and small uh, amount of connective tissue, you are not doing nothing and asking the patient to stop traumatizing the tissue with the bristle or with the floss, and it will heal spontaneously. If the patient will continue with the incorrect uh, brushing technique or flossing technique, he will damage all layers of gingival tissue, and we will have V type of the defects that angle are already epitalized. <clears throat> and in that situation, you have a white Stillman cleft. And if it treats mucogingival junction, you have complete white Stillman clefts. And this should be treated with a mucogingival surgery too. So white Stillman clefts incomplete, it means that we still have some keratinized tissue attached to the tooth root and lingual complete Stillman clefts. And this defect is due to tongue piercing. Another group of the medical indications for the mucogingival surgery, when we have non carious or carious cervical lesions on the tooth root. So in that case, when you have thin gingiva, already existing recession defects and carriers or non carrier cervical lesions on the root, you have to think not about a composite, but to send the patient or to treat it by mucogingival surgery. About the aesthetic indications, we all know that we have three types of the smile line. In a high and medium smile line, we can see gingival exposure, while in, in the low smile line, we cannot see the gingival exposure. So in the case when you see the gingival exposure, what we are evaluating as periodontists, we are checking for the gingival margin position. 
And in case you have recession defects and gingival margin position disalignment, the treatment will be with a mucogingival surgery. Also, we are checking the tooth crown and length and width. And in case uh, you can see disalignment between the tooth length and the reason is a recession defect, you are treating with the mucogingival surgery. Another group of the patients, when we are evaluating interdental soft tissue fill, when you have defects and true recession defects, you are treating with the mucogingival surgery too. And the discoloration of the gingiva with small recession defects, this is an indication for the mucogingival surgery to cover, to mask uh, dark roots and also to improve, uh, to treat the recession defects. When you have low smile line, sorry, when you have low smile line and the patient went under orthodontic treatment and she expect uh, full mouth rehabilitation, aesthetic rehabilitation. You have to evaluate the gingiva too. In thin phenotype, when you all have already existing recession defect, this is, is not mostly aesthetic indication, but the indication to improve the tissue for the long-term stability after your rehabilitation treatment with aesthetic crowns or veneers. In case the patient requires aesthetic treatment, you know that she or he will see discrepancy in the gingival part when the gingival will recede after the treatment, after aesthetic rehabilitation. So at least you have to inform the patient that uh, if they don't do anything with the thickening of the tissue, it can be the recession defect formation after some time. Okay, so we have nice, correct case for the surgical treatment, then we move on with the treatment planning. And treatment planning includes few parts. So orthodontic treatment, when we are using orthodontic treatment before mucogingival surgeries. In case our tooth root is located buccally, we would like to have the tooth, that tooth root brought back to the bony envelope. Why it's so important for the periodontist, for, for the periodontist or surgeon? Because after you bring back root back to the bony envelope, you will gain more keratinized tissue. You will decrease the depth and twist of the recession defect, and, and you will be more successful um, after mucogingival surgery. Also, the teeth where, which are rotated and malocclusion class two division with a traumatic deep bite. First, the patient should go under orthodontic treatment and then you have to check for the mucogingival surgery. Restorative treatment. When we have non carous or carous cervical lesions, we are dividing them into the lesion only in a crown on the root surface or lesion can be combined. If the defect is only located on the tooth crown with no recessions or small recession, we are treating with the composite that we already know. If the defect is located on the tooth root, we know that we are making mucogingival surgery. And if the defect is combined, then we have to restore the prior mucogingival surgery, two or three days, and then go on with the mucogingival surgeries. And in case we have very acute angle of the non-carrier cervical lesion, that we could not, we should not form too bulky uh, cemento enamel junction shape, we have to make an enamel plasty and restore the cervical part in order to prepare the tooth for the mucogingival surgery. So why it's so important to restore these non-carrier cervical lesions prior mucogingival surgery? It's mainly one point of view from the aesthetic point of view, because the patient, 
if even if the surgeon makes 100% of the root coverage and we will leave the non-carrier cervical lesion on the crown, he will see discrepancy between the color on the tooth crown and he will consider that the treatment is failed. So to avoid this problem, you have to think about the treatment prior mucogingival surgery. Another cases where you should think about the restorative treatment is anatomical and clinical limitations to cover 100% root. When you have tooth extrusion, you can investigate and see abrasion defect on the incisal edge. When you have rotation of the tooth, or buccally displaced tooth, you have to predetermine new cement enamel junction position. Also, when you have interdental soft or clinical attachment loss, you have to predetermine new cement enamel junction position. And how to do this? So you are checking the true papillary height from the contact point to the cement enamel junction angular point measuring from both sides and then shifting that measurement from the existing papilla. And when you are tracing the line, you can have the true new cement enamel junction position, which needs to be before mucogingival surgery. And after mucogingival surgery, we would like to have cement enamel position one, maximum two millimeters above gingival margin. Few words about the cement enamel junction. When you are looking at the natural tooth from the front, you have curvy, uh, curvy shape of the cement enamel junction. And while from the profile, the cement enamel junction has also convex smooth shape. So when you are positioning your cement enamel junction, you have to make uh, measurements from the maximum root coverage suggestion measurements. And also, if it's aesthetic area, you have to know, you have to remember the golden triangle that canine cement enamel junction supposed to be one millimeter more upper than the uh, second incisor. Why it's so important to restore cement enamel junction prior mucogingival surgery? So it's a reference point uh, for us surgeons to know the, uh, uh, the recession defect. Also, the correct cement enamel junction lead us uh, the reference point where we should fix our connective tissue graft. And finally, we know where we should adapt our flap uh, after mucogingival surgery. What about the shape of cement enamel junction? Sometimes when I send the patient to restore new cement enamel junction, I received too bulky. Shape of the cement enamel junction is not good because we reduce, we, we have a risk to have flap shrinkage after we shift the flap on too bulky surface of the cement enamel junction due to bad vascularization. And if it's too flat, you can have the blood seeping out of the flap from the sulcus. And in that case, you will lose the blood clot. It also uh, reduce the success of the surgical procedure. In case you restore good, beautiful shape, convex shape that emerges from, from the root surface uh, of the cement enamel junction, it helps us to keep blood clot stable that during the healing phase, the tissue maturation phase, we increase with the thickness of the tissue and also the good shape of cement enamel junction lead us for the correct flap position. It means that for more successful treatment results. What about the prophylaxis before surgical procedure? Those who are working with me knows very well that I'm not touching the gingiva in any type of the surgeries if they are inflamed with a scalpel blade. So why we need to prepare the patient with a good prophylaxis prior surgical procedure? Well, we are speaking about the successful treatment. So we really want to be successful. The healthy tissue 
lead us to avoid tearing during the surgical manipulation. We will have faster healing if we treat healthy tissue. And obviously, we will have better vascularization after. Now, the surgery planning stage. I highly recommend for those who are beginners and even advanced to start planning your surgery, uh, not only by placing the restorations, but also you are uh, planning your flap design. In order, you will forget during the surgery, you can double check why it's so important to plan your flap design before surgery to avoid mistakes. Also, uh, during the planning stage, you can select your connective tissue graft use. And the connective tissue graft, we have mainly two, subepithelium and free gingival graft. And the golden standard is free gingival graft, deepitalized free gingival graft and it has many advantages. It's easy, fast, and safe to harvest. Also, the graft is very stable. We have less bleeding during the surgical procedure. We have painless and fast healing of the palate. Also, we can differentiate in the thickness of the graft. This graft is um, rich of collagen fibers, so it has less resorption after the healing and it keeps flap stable after mucogingival surgery and um, these benefits uh, lead us to choose this type of the graft when we are using connective tissue graft i separate it into the soft tissue and root related indications. So when we have not enough height and thickness of keratinized tissue, when we have defects in a soft tissue, when we have muscles attached uh, high with a frenulum insertion, when we have shallow vestibulum, when we have interdental soft tissue loss or cal loss, we are using the connective tissue graft. The indications related to the tooth root it's when we have deep abrasion defects on the root, prominent roots or rotated roots, and also the dark roots. One more very important factor to be successful in your recession defect treatment, it's good communication and collaboration with the patient. When you explain to the patient what the procedure will be, and you will give him part of the responsibility of the success, then you avoid a nightmare. Otherwise, if you tell that this is a small procedure and healing will be fast, easy, and painless, the patients start checking every day the healing. And it's very fragile because if they detach the blood clot, if they tear the flap, you will have the problems at the end with the healing and not aesthetic result at the end. When we have good case for the treatment, when we plan it uh, precisely, then we are moving with the surgical procedure. And surgical technique, unfortunately, there is no one technique that we can use for all recession defect treatment. But my priority is coronally advanced flap or bilaminar technique. In previous life, it was a question, how often I'm using the tunnel technique? And statistically, I can answer, it's 90% of my surgeries is coronally advanced or open flap, and 10% I'm working with the tunnel technique. So I was a student, I had an honor to be a student of Professor Giovanni Zoheli. Those who know him, I believe that everybody knows him. He is the greatest virtuous and expert in uh, periodontal surgeries. And his genius mind and development, creating all the techniques and improving day by day impresses a lot. And he really teaches so much that we cannot believe that 
we can use the other technique. So when you are looking at his hands, you can see that he is not only the researcher, he is real virtuous clinician. And he really shows the surgeries for 4,000 of the people and they are enormous surgeries. So coronally advanced flab, in my opinion, has many advantages to use. If you have one tooth with a recession defect, you can select only one tooth. In case you are treating with a tunnel technique, you have to advance your flap, one tooth mesial and distal. Also, when you open the flap, you will have better visibility of the surgical procedure. It means that during the, the brightment stage of the tooth root, you can be more safe and to have less tissue trauma. While in the tunnel technique, you can touch the gingival margin with the instruments when you are preparing the tooth root. Also, you can use selectively connective tissue graft. It means for the patient is more comfortable procedure. You can fix the graft whenever you need in the high up to the cementonamal junction or below. And also you can precisely adapt the flap on the surgical area and cover connective tissue graft. In such case, when you cover fully connective tissue graft, you don't have a discrepancy in tissue color. But in a tunnel technique, when you don't have enough keratinized tissue and you want to improve the keratinized tissue, you have to leave the graft exposed. We have very beautiful the decision-making tree that you can follow it and you can treat the recession defects. So when we have single type of the recession defects and enough keratinized tissue only to make an advancement, we are doing just advancement of the tissue by trapezoidal or triangular flap. And with the advancement, only advancement of the tissue, you will gain not only the high of the keratinized tissue, but also you will have due to good maturation of the blood clot, the thickness, uh, the, the, the thickness of the keratinized tissue, you will improve it. And the discrepancy that you can see in the cervical part is due to altered active eruption. Well, when you don't have enough keratinized tissue or high frenulum attachment, or uh, when you have shallow vestibulum, deep non-carious or carious lesion or prominent root, then you have to place the connective tissue graft above your flap. And in that situation, the graft serves for the flap fixation and stabilization at the right position. So you can see the healing. This technique we call bilamina technique. The indications for modified coronally advanced tunnel when we have interdental soft tissue or clinical attachment loss. So when we want to improve papillary region, we are making the tunnel technique. In an isolated deep gingival recession defect, we have mainly three types of the recession defect treatment procedures. My preference nowadays is laterally closed tunnel when I feel more comfortable for the treatment and afterwards I receive more uh, aesthetic results. But also when you have enough keratinized tissue on adjacent teeth, you can go on with a laterally moved coronally advanced flap. And in case you don't have enough keratinized tissue in a high or thickness and you don't want to risk, you can make a two-stage technique. First, free gingival graft. And second, you shift the flap more coronally with a treating gingival recession. And in such situation, uh, 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 the aesthetics is not so good because we have the discrepancy in a tissue color. When we are speaking about the multiple recession defects in the upper jaw, we have envelope type of coronal advanced flap. It has also many benefits because if you have 
good, great amount of keratinized tissue and good anatomic conditions, you don't need the connective tissue graft. And it's very aesthetic procedure, easy procedure, and for the patient is fast and painless healing. But when you don't have enough keratinized tissue only for the advancement or you have deep carious cervical lesions, shallow vestibulum, or uh, on any other anatomic limitations, you are choosing the connective tissue graft in envelope technique selectively. And cytospecific use of the graft leads us for the full treatment of the recession defect. And the results are very aesthetic. This patient went under all recession defect treatment and the results after the three years. When we have interdental soft or clinical attachment loss, the priority goes to modified coronally advanced flap. But in that situation, we have to use the connective tissue graft in all regions. It means that we extend the wound in the palate and it's not so easy uh, for the patient after the surgical procedure to heal. Professor Sofia Roca uh, suggested cytospecific use uh, of the connective tissue graft uh, with a multiple modified coronary advanced tunnel technique. There is no enough clinical evidence to use this technique in all our cases. So I feel more comfortable when I'm using the connective tissue graft in all tunnel technique. When we are speaking about the lower jaw, we have to separate. There is the frontal area and the lateral area. Why we are separating, separating our surgeries? Because of the different uh, muscle insertion positions. So the frontal area, we are treating with the laminar technique and the healing after the treatment. So even with the laminar technique, you can see we can improve papillary region. When we have thin papilla, it means that less than three millimeters of width, I'm feeling more comfortable with a modified coronally advanced tunnel technique. And finally, the lateral region we are treating with a uh, um, coronally advanced flap with one vertical incision, envelope type of the flap with one vertical incision, and we have the healing after the procedure. One more important aspect about surgical procedures. I highly recommend to use microsurgical approach it has so many benefits. So first, when you are using high magnification and illumination, you can enhance your surgical abilities and precision. Also, when you are using micro instruments, you can be so precise from the beginning to the end of the surgical procedure that leads to faster healing, less tissue trauma. It means uh, you will have more predictable result after the treatment. And this instrument is one of my favorite in instruments. It's a wiper blade and courtesy goes to the Dr. Benjamin Cortez and uh, MGK Instruments. They developed this instrument. And suturing, when we are speaking about the suturing, it's very important uh, precisely a position, the wound edges. This leads to scarless, fast healing, faster vascularization of the wound. Few words about the timing. When we have the patient, if he needs orthodontic treatment, we are starting our surgical procedure after two months after orthodontic treatment. In case the patient don't need an orthodontic treatment or don't want orthodontic treatment, we are moving on with the professional oral hygiene. And it has to be not less than two weeks before surgical procedure. Then uh, new restorations of the cement enamel junction two to three days before surgical procedure, surgery, and then we are leaving for the healing. I wrote three months, 
but I prefer a little bit longer to wait for the tissue maturation. Then we can continue with the gentle professional oral hygiene. And then only after six months, we are moving on with the definitive restorations. So I would like to finish my presentation and uh, the take home message will be, when you are using correct treatment protocols with respect to biological concepts and choosing your surgical technique according indications, you can be successful in any type of mucogingival surgeries, including recession defect treatment. And before going to the question session, I would like one more minute of your attention. Dear colleagues, I am Yevo Anulneta, Dr. Periodontist with more than 10 years of clinical experience. Since 2017, working mainly in aesthetic periodontal surgeries. I was blessed to be a student of one of the best professors all over the world the greatest virtuous and expert in soft tissue management around teeth and implants, Professor Giovanni Zuhelli. On top of that, I'm active member of Swiss Perio Community, microscopic and microsurgical treatment concept with the leading doctor, Rino Burhardt. Dear colleagues, advanced surgeons, clinicians who are already performing surgeries. Today, I would like to invite you into my two masterclasses, single and multiple recession defect treatment around the teeth. During the course, I will share with you all my competence, concentrated knowledge and clinical experience treating gingival recessions from simply to advanced clinical cases. You will get knowledge accomplished with all main procedures in short notebooks, detailed step-by-step -step explanation of each clinical procedure, full fit with videos and animations. And finally, you will improve your manual skills in hands-on session. The main goal of this masterclass is to share with you correct treatment protocols for the successful daily results. Looking forward, to see you soon. Kind regard from Vilnius. Okay. Okay, so now we are ready for the question session. Okay, uh, Eva, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Okay. Now we are ready for the question session, I guess. Okay, so I would like you to thank you for the great presentation. Uh, for me, it was great to see that you are talking about the hygiene and the planning. It's like, for me, it's very, very important. Uh, so thank you for that. I've got one question uh, from uh, our participant. So. Are you using Mdogain uh, during the root coverage procedure? Yes, I'm using Mdogain, but uh, it's according indication. Uh, it's not scientifically proven that we have to use Mdogain for all recession defect treatment. In case we have wide recession defects, in case we have deep recession defects and buccally displaced recessions uh, roots, so I'm using Mdogain in such situation. In other situations, I'm not using Mdogain. So sometimes when you have a patient that does not allow you to take a, a free gingival graft from the palate, mm -hmm. and you have very small amount of uh, attached gingiva, is it condition that you can use Mdogain as an alternative to free no. gingival graft? No. No, it's not, uh, it's not that condition. If you have not enough keratinized tissue only for the advancement for the flap and to, well, 
in other terms, if you have deep recession defect and uh, not enough keratinized tissue, the M-Dogain won't help you to keep the flaps st uh, stable after you shift it coronally, okay? The main reason why we are using connective tissue graft for the flap stabilization. But if you have shallow uh, recession defect, okay, and uh, keratinized tissue one millimeter, so you can go on only with the advancement of the flap. Sometimes it's enough to gain more keratinized tissue and to improve the thickness of the keratinized tissue. So endogain is not because of the uh, flap stability after advancement. It's just improve the attachment to the uh, root surface. Because if you have wide recession defect and you don't put endogain, usually we have that healing that in the center part, we still have the pocket after recession defect treatment. So to avoid this, the centric healing, we have to put Mdoga in, in order to gain more attachment and not to leave the pocket in the central part. But it's only for that, not for the uh, stabilization of the flap. Okay. And and it's not a problem for the patient uh, to to let to take a graft. Just you have to speak with him more and okay. more, and like take an hour. <laughs> And I believe that all the patients will agree. At least in my practice, I did not have any problems with um, taking the graft from the palate. When they see that it's nothing and uh, painless healing. So I convinced them to, to let me to harvest. Thank you. Uh, I do the same, so I don't use end again in uh, like every root coverage. So I've got one more question. Uh, what kind of uh, thinning material? Uh, I I mean, it's it's a composite. It's, it's a composite. Uh, I don't know. I'm not making the uh, filling materials by myself. I'm sending to, to the colleagues. The main point that uh, the filling material material. Has, uh, doesn't have to be deeper than two millimeters above the gingival margin where we'd, we would like to place, okay? And uh, which composite, it doesn't make sense. I believe that. But I'm not the restorative dentist. Maybe somebody can disagree with me, you know? Maybe there is some very good uh, composite that uh, we can use for the gingival uh, recession defect in a, a combined non carrier cervical lesion defect. I think that the only important thing, it has to be polished. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it has to be polished very well and, uh, and not too bulky and not too flat. So, so uh, according- <laughs> Yeah, according to anatomy of the natural tooth, not too bulky and not too flat. Okay, thank you. And I've got one more question. It's a question about the Vista technique. Do you okay. use it in your practice? Uh, I use it. I use it, uh, especially when I have a very uh, high, uh, very, uh, very big frenulum. Then I'm using Vista technique uh in, in in a recession defect treatment okay so i never used it before so maybe i will teach you, <laughs> you will teach me. i will teach at least i will show how to do this so uh, we have many surgical techniques and uh, as i mentioned before uh, it, it depends from the indication, which technique we can use. And also it depends from the surgeon manual skills and knowledge. You know, if, if you know how to do one or the other technique, maybe you are feeling free uh, to work with only that technique and your cases are successful. But in my opinion, there should be an indication. And um, yeah, I can, I can teach you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, Eva, uh, I don't see any more questions. David, uh, 
Teodora. It's a brilliant presentation. Bravo, Eva. Thank you. Thank you, David. Mm, so I think you know each other. Yes, 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 we know each other. David is a great uh, clinician and he can speak most probably about the filling materials. Uh, I'm not sure, but maybe he can comment uh, which is the best filling material. Uh, he is a restorative dentist and a very brilliant clinician too. So okay. thank you, David. Uh, I've got one more question. Is there any method that can save a failed surgery if the grass, graft was not deepitalialized properly and after application in tunnel, after healing, there is a space between a graft and gingiva? So I believe that you have to redo the surgical technique. Uh, if you leave the graft with epithelium, and if it's only the small part of epithelium, if you did not deepitalize correctly, so it's not a problem, it, it will uh, necrotize and uh, it will heal uh, good. But in case you do not deepitalize the graft and you uh, left a huge amount of epithelium, you have to repeat the surgery by removing the graft and uh, placing once again. Unfortunately, there is no other treatment of such kind of complications. Also, when you have the cyst from epithelium, it depends which side you are placing the graft, uh, deepitalized graft. If you are placing deepitalized graft with that part that was epithelium on the two fruit surface, so in that case, you can have the pocketing. But if you place the graft in opposite direction, that means that epithelium uh, above the uh, flap, in that situation, you can have the cyst, uh, the epithelium cyst. You can try to make an excision or in other terms, uh, if it, it, it doesn't work, you have to redo the surgery just to deepitalize in a surgical area, the graft. But this- uh, it, it's, it sounds like a big surgery. It, 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 the same surgery, I believe. <laughs> the same <laughs> surgery, just, you know, to, to fix something. So we have to be very careful uh, removing- With the deapitalization, uh, yes. yes. It's easy, fast, and safe technique. You avoid the uh, palatal artery, but on the other hand, uh, you have to use the high magnification and illumination because uh, reflection of the epithelium is different from the connective tissue. And when you are checking it, uh, you can see the difference between epithelium and connective tissue. So, you have to be aware not to leave too much epithelium on the graft. Okay. It sounds easy. And I know it's easy. Uh, but it is, you know, when you are using it daily, the deapitalization of the graft, it's easy. It's even very easy technique for harvesting, you know, uh, because you can see clearly your surgical area. There is not so much bleeding. If you anesthetize patient correctly, and if you are not too deep, you have almost no bleeding during the surgical procedure. And, uh, you know, uh, after when you, the patient is resting, you can deapitalize outside of the mouth and you can check, double check, you know, the craft if you remove all epithelium. And uh, the other thing, some of the doctors, they are using uh, the drills, the diamond drills and deapitalizing in the mouth. Uh, from one uh, point of view, it's maybe you feel more safe because you deapitalize with the burr diamond burr, the graft, mm -hmm. and you remove all epithelium. But from the other point of view, it's more bleeding if you use a drill when you want to harvest the graft. And the second thing, um, uh, that area where we drill, it can necrotize. During the healing, it, it can necrotize. And if you uh, leave very thin graft, uh, 
uh, above the flap, you can have necrosis of the graft. So you will lose some, some connective tissue. Okay, so that's, that's easy. Easy part. <laughs> it's better to depitalize with the scalpel blade outside of the mouth. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's it's easier and less uh, less predict uh, more predictable actually. Yeah. Do we have more questions? No, I think we've done. I don't see any more questions. Uh, so no, there is no question. So if you like to see more surgeries and learn how to make all those things. Uh, we are welcoming you <clears throat> on EVA hands-on in Poznan. So the links are in the chat box. So you can click it and check uh, the, <clears throat> the hands-on. And I think EVA will see very soon. Thank yeah, you very I, much for I, a great I, presentation. I'm... And see you soon. Thank you, everybody, for being with us today. Uh, I hope we will see you soon. So have a great night. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar the second time. And I uh, hope to see you soon, too. And if you have some questions, you can also send me by email. Uh, I'm sure that you can share this. And um, feel free. So have a good evening, and it was very nice to be with all you tonight. Bye.